Big story, widespread pain. It's now day 26 of the record long government shutdown and the impact is growing. Lines at the airport are getting longer, family budgets are getting tighter, and the newest casualty may be the State of the Union address. Nancy Pelosi calling on President Trump to postpone that speech. We want to know if you think this is a good idea. Go to WXYZ.com slash vote and tell us. Meantime, President Trump trying to minimize the impact. 1,700 furloughed safety inspectors recalled by the FAA, 46,000 by the IRS, all this to get tax returns done on time, and the FDA, 400 food and drug inspectors all being called back. Mm -hmm. Working without pay. So tonight, yeah. more and more families are actually feeling the pinch. 7 Action News reporter Anu Prakash is live to show you how they're taking it day by day, Anu. Yeah, Glenda and Allen, it is a struggle for so many families. Tonight I talked to Daniel Clock. He is not only a government employee, but he's also a disabled veteran. When you lose your livelihood overnight, basically, um, and you have to scramble to sort of make ends meet, um, that, that's very stressful. Stressful and scary. That's how Daniel Clock says life has been ever since the government shut down. He works for the EPA in Ann Arbor, but these days he's at home with no income coming in. We've just tightened things up, really, you know, we've tightened our belt. We're getting used to macaroni and cheese and, and ramen noodles. Clock is a disabled veteran who spent 33 years in the Army. He's also a husband and father. There's no leisure activities. We don't go out to eat. Um, we're looking at ways to uh, save money. Uh, we're, we're cutting coupons, calling my um, my mortgage company and I'm calling uh, our utilities and seeing if I can work something out with them so that, you know, they don't turn the lights off around here. Financial advisor Rick Bloom says making calls like that is a smart move for families like the clocks. He also suggests reaching out to your lender about your loans. There are lots of banks that have hardship programs and those programs are open to people that lost their job through the government. And so a lot of times those programs will suspend payments on their mortgages and their car payments and even student loans. Bloom says if you have an IRA, that could be a source of some money for the short term. I would recommend people look at their IRAs, whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. You could withdraw money and then you have 60 days to pay it back. I think the mistake a lot of people do is they run short and they just put it on their charge card. The problem with that, they're going to pay 20.5% interest and they're never going to get caught up. Clock says he's looking at all avenues for assistance, and that includes reaching out to family. We don't like to think about February and March, you know, we're, we're basically just worrying about, we're taking it day by day and we're worrying about today. And even in spite of his own struggles, he's still thinking about others. It's tough on federal workers and their families, but it's also tough on the American public because they're not getting the services that they pay for as taxpayers. Hopefully this will this will end sooner rather than later. Yeah, we can only hope so many families having to make so many adjustments. Daniel Cox says that he has also reached out to the VA, hoping that maybe they can offer his family some assistance as well. Reporting live tonight, Anu Prakash, 7 Action News. And we have to get those federal workers back to work. All right, Anu, thank you. And you can follow the government shutdown right here on 7 Action News every step of the way. We'll bring you updates both on air and on our website, WXYZ.com.